Welcome back. Well, days after a truce with Hamas collapsed, Israeli forces have turned their focus to southern Gaza, hitting areas where hundreds of thousands of Palestinians have sought shelter since the start of the war. Turkey's President Erdogan today denounced Benjamin Netanyahu as a butcher and said he would eventually be tried as a war criminal. Well, joining me now from Tel Aviv is the Prime Minister's senior advisor, Mark Regev. Mr Regev, thank you very much indeed for joining me again. Your reaction, first of all... My pleasure. Your, your reaction, first of all, to President Erdogan, he said that uh, of the Prime Minister, beyond being a war criminal, Netanyahu is the butcher of Gaza right now, will be tried as the butcher of Gaza, just as Milosevic was tried. What is your reaction to that? I, of course, don't accept the criticism. And unfortunately, this is not out of, uh, uh, out of uh, uh, character for, for the Turkish leadership, which has, of course, been very critical over the years of, of Israel and very supportive, I should say, of Hamas. The big question now is exactly what is the game plan for Israel? You're moving into the south. There are, as we know, two million Palestinians now crowded into a 90-square-mile area. Um, this is already clearly, I would say, indisputably a humanitarian crisis there. But also, they were told to go south to be safe. Now they're being attacked in the south. Nowhere is safe now in Gaza. Would you accept that? No. When we, when we told people to relocate to the south, it was true. The, the fighting was concentrating in the north, and we asked people to move to the south because they'd be safer. And that was true then. Now the operation is continuing into areas of the south, and we've specified, as has been widely reported, specific areas in the south which remain safer zones, and we've urged people to relocate there. Now, we know it's difficult to move. Uh, my father was a refugee. He had to move from place to place in the Second World War to, to save his life. I know it's difficult to move, but surely it's better to move than it is to stay in a combat zone and get caught up in crossfire. It's all a matter of managing risk. We want to see civilians outside combat zones. We don't want to see them accidentally hurt. It's best for them to move. And the truth is, we're seeing now Gazans are voting with their feet and are moving to the areas which we've specified as safer areas. But eventually, this operation is going to clearly lead to you attacking all over Gaza. Where do they eventually move, all these people? Is the operation actually designed to permanently displace the Palestinian people, as some fear? No, not at all. Uh, and, and we hope that people can, when the fighting is over, that people can go back to their homes and where homes have been destroyed because of the fighting, and there'll be temporary shelters for them, I hope. Uh, but, but it is common sense. Our enemy is Hamas. And as you know, Hamas has embedded itself in civilian neighborhoods, in mosques, in schools, uh, in hospitals, unfortunately. And, and we've had to fight Hamas and we will defeat Hamas. But once Hamas is defeated, of course, we'll be allowing people to return to their homes. And of course, uh, will, there'll be a massive rebuilding and reconstruction campaign of Gaza. That's going to be needed. How many terrorists have you killed? So I can't give you an exact amount because the war is still going on. But we, we see the, the death toll in, 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 in fatalities on the terrorist side in the thousands. But if you don't know, how do you know, if you know what I mean? Well, we've got, we've got estimates, but because we're not sure, uh, and I'll explain to you why we're not sure, you, you blow up a, an underground bunker, yes, which Hamas has got these underground fortifications across the Gaza Strip. You destroy it. You, you don't necessarily know if there were 10 terrorists inside or 20 or 50, yes, because you've destroyed an un, underground uh, 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 fortification. So it's all based on approximations. When this is over, I think we'll have a more precise uh, understanding of the numbers. But I've been in uh, briefings. And I, I've heard the numbers. It's in the thousands. Right. I mean, I hear this from the Israeli side, but nobody seems to be able to produce any concrete evidence. And I understand slightly the fog of war, but the significance of this is that if you can't actually produce hard evidence of how many Hamas terrorists you're, you're killing and the death toll of innocent civilians keeps rising and rising and rising, as it has done now, over 15,000 uh, by the Hamas-run health authorities' estimation. You know, you know the public opprobrium that's coming Israel's way the longer this goes on. Isn't it incumbent on Israel to actually be able to produce clear evidence of the volume of Hamas terrorists you're killing? Because if there are 35,000 of them and you've only killed 1,000 or 2,000 so far then the fear is that the civilian death toll is going to be 100,000, 200,000 before you can even think about eradicating Hamas. What is the, the line for Israel? Is there one? Or is there no limit 
on civilian casualties so long as you've still got Hamas terrorists to kill? So, first of all, we don't want to see a single civilian casualty. You've heard me say that before, and we mean it. Uh, we don't want to see civilians caught up in the crossfire. That's why we're urging people to leave combat zones. It's common sense. If we don't want to see them get caught up in the fighting between the Israeli Defense Forces and Hamas, please, we urge people to leave combat zones. And most of the, the, the civilians do so. Uh, Hamas, as, as you know, and has been reported, they've urged people to stay, ordered people to stay even at gunpoint because they want those guys and civilians as a human shield. But white right-minded person agrees to be a human shield for Hamas. Of course, they want to leave, and we have to facilitate their leave. And even now, as, as we move towards our uh, ground incursion in the south, I can assure you that escape routes will be there for the civilians to still reach the safe areas, because we don't want to see them come into harm's way. And we'll make every effort possible. About the numbers, and you ask a good question. Uh, uh, look, we could just articulate numbers the way Hamas does and just make them up and, and throw them out there. No, we're very precise. And if we don't have a precise number, we're not going to make one up. When you say, when I say in the thousands, I know what I'm talking about. It's more than 2,000. It's in the thousands. Uh, but we don't want to say numbers that we're not 100% sure. But I can say something that we are sure of. Uh, uh, look, we're fighting a difficult war against a brutal terrorist organization in, a, in an urban area. And we, if we compare ourselves to, let's say, what, what the West did against ISIS in places like Mosul and, and, and Fallujah, I am sure when this is over, and you can have me back if this is not true, but I am sure, because I know this to be the, the, the case. When one looks at the, the, what, what they, the experts call the, the combat to civilian death ratio, yes, and you will compare the IDF's behavior in Gaza together with, uh, against what the West did in, let's say, places like Mosul and Fallujah, I think the IDF's going to come out very favorably. How favorably will Israel come out with what's going on with the settlers on the West Bank? I watched a very disturbing report on the BBC from Jeremy Bowen tonight, where there is clear, uh, huge aggression from Israeli settlers against Palestinians, a lot of deaths, and Hamas are not involved there. They're, they're not the controlling body. How do you feel about that? So, first of all, we did have a terrible terrorist attack in Jerusalem just a few days ago, where Hamas uh, shot at people uh, waiting at a bus stop on their way to work. I think that was, was that Friday morning or Thursday morning last week? That was widely reported. Uh, Hamas doesn't control the West Bank, but Hamas has violent cells across the West Bank that are there, and they've wanted to activate those cells. And that's why we, we had those murderous attacks in Jerusalem uh, just a few days ago. Hamas is there. They're more underground on the West Bank, but they're still a threat. And we've tried to be as proactive as we can be in trying to go out there and arrest Hamas activists. Look, Hamas in Gaza is under a lot of pressure, so they've sent messages to all their cells in the West Bank, this is a time for you guys to kill Jews, yes? And, and they succeeded, unfortunately, last week, but we have limited their ability to, to kill people by being proactive, arresting people in the middle of the night, but does taking wiping out these Hamas out, but activists. does wiping out villages um, and looking like you are encroaching more and more with the settlements throughout this conflict, is that not just incredibly inflammatory? Uh, to the Palestinian I'm people sorry, living uh, in the West Bank. Uh, you, uh, uh, Piers, there's been no villages that have been wiped out. Well, I, I literally saw what, one on the BBC where, where it's been almost demolished and the people have been displaced. 200 or so had been displaced permanently. So, so once again, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about uh, and I apologise for not having that information. Mm -hmm. But the Israeli policy on the West Bank is to live and let live, yes? And that's, if Palestinians that's not are not involved in violence... Mr. Reagan, with respect. That's not, that's not what was. I disagree. Happening. I mean, it's obviously been a difficult period, but we have so far managed to keep it, and despite the fatalities we had last week, yes, it could be a lot worse. But through our actions, we've managed to keep the level of violence on the West Bank relatively low. I mean, the Hamas people want to see an explosion on the West Bank. That's what they want. They want to see uh, Hamas activists get on, the, on, on, on jeeps like they did in Gaza and come into Jewish communities and butcher people. That's what they want to see. And so far, once again, we had fatalities last week, but I think overall we've managed to keep the level of violence relatively low, and that's a good thing for Israelis okay. and Palestinians. Final question. What is victory going to look like here? I mean, if there are still Hamas terrorists alive at the end of this, is that victory, or do they simply bide their time, regroup, and come back at Israel even stronger because so many people will have been killed by then in Gaza? So when, victory is the destruction of Hamas's military machine and the end of their political control over the Gaza Strip, a bit like victory over ISIS in Iraq and Syria. You didn't have to kill every last ISIS uh, gunman, but you destroyed their territorial independence, you destroyed their ability to, to control an enclave because that gives them power. 
we can't destroy the Hamas idea just as you can't destroy the ISIS idea, but you can remove from them the capability to inflict pain on others. And, and we believe that once we have destroyed Hamas's terror regime in Gaza, there'll be room uh, to build something uh, better for the Palestinians. Uh, they can build it themselves. We'll support them. Uh, uh, but let's be clear here. When this is over, Hamas's path of extremism, of radicalism, of violence, of terror will be discredited, not because it hurt us, but because it hurt the people of Gaza. I mean, the people of Gaza are not stupid. They can see who started this war, who brought all this destruction upon them, who even uh, ended the ceasefire by refusing to, to release more hostages. The people of Gaza know this. They can't speak their minds today because they live in a terrible dictatorial state. Uh, Hamas does not allow people to criticize them and, and not face consequences, violent consequences. But when this is over and the people of Gaza can speak, they will say that Hamas brought this tragedy upon them. And there'll be room, I think, to work with Palestinian moderates to build a better future for Gaza. It's good for Israel. It's good for Gazans. Uh, Mr. Ogier, thank you very much. One question for you. Uh, I would love to interview Prime Minister Netanyahu. I interviewed him back in March when he was in London. I've put in a number of requests. He's not spoken yet to any European media entity, only American ones. Could we have an interview with Prime Minister Netanyahu? So, so I'll, I'll check that out with the Prime Minister. I know he's interviewed in the past and he's enjoyed that and he could well do it again. I just can't commit for him at the moment. Uh, he has been focused on American media. I think we've done... Uh, I think 95% of our interviews have been you directed have, yeah. to the US market That's... because the US market, the Americans are our most important ally, as you well understand. Well, Britain uh, has proven and, to be a pretty uh, good ally too, so that's why I'm asking the question. I think it, it might be... You are 100% the... correct. Britain, Britain has been a good ally in this, in mm -hmm. this conflict and so has Germany, and we know to appreciate our friends. Well, it, we would be good to, Britain, it would be good to be able to Germany, interview the Prime Minister if he could spare us the time. If you could pass that message to him. I'll, I'll, I will speak to him about it the next time I see him. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Mr. Rego. Thank you.